to the stage right here. Uh, please give a big warm welcome to the practitioner. I'm the practitioner, and I'm a consulting detective. A consulting dick, you might say. It's like a private dick, only this junk is more accessible. <laughs> See, the thing is, wearing a trench coat like this, I always have to shave. So this way my clients don't mean mistake. So this way my clients don't mistake me for a pedo. I was hired tonight by one sea monster. Mr. Practitioner, he said, help me find out who stole my cookie from my cookie jar. So I did. Being a stupid guy, being 40-something, yet having the mentality of only a six-year-old, Mr. C. Monster told me that it was a woman of about 20-something who had been seen leaving the scene. I trailed one fitting that description to this very bar. Amongst all these suspicious people, the suspicious waiters all going about their business, the security guards who have their own hidden agendas, and the audience all secretly hiding a geeky side. I found a woman fitting us the exact same description. You! I probably thought that she might be the culprit. So she was gonna come up on stage so that this way I could verify whether she had a crumb sample from the cookie, apple cinnamon, according to the forensic lab. Yeah. Unfortunately, lacking the evidence bag I needed with the chemical test on hand, I simply pulled out a handkerchief, which I knew would at least allow me to collect the sample for further analysis later. I got her to come on stage. In order to make sure, I got her to take the handkerchief and slip the bottom part in her shirt so this way I can absorb it. Yes, to absorb whatever cookie stains were in her cleavage. It's all right. But you see, the thing was, in order to focus, I was right about her being suspicious in that she was very loose and easy, but I was wrong about the cookie. For with a single thing, the handkerchief absorbed her bra. So obviously, she was, so obviously, she was clearly innocent, but nonetheless suspicious. You can go back to your seat. So I said, I let her go. But then I remembered something. It was possible that maybe she hadn't been getting a guy, because all the guys lately had been involved in other stuff, like possibly stealing or focusing on the cookie as opposed to the nookie. So looking for a suspicious man, I probably saw this guy, and now I'm going up to the stage, feeling and figuring he fit the profile of a possible thief. You, sir, up here! In order to verify whether or not he was lying, I had to calibrate myself to his very thought processes. So I used the classic card routine, figuring not only that I could use fortune telling to not only read his mind for a card, but also tell what the card meant. I took away the jokers. I got him to freely select any card he wanted. Not show it to me, but by simply taking a look at it, showing it to the audience, I was able to tell that his card was a red card. It was a complete, even balance of all five points. This man must be a wicked, for I sensed it was the five of diamonds, the pentacle. I but knew it. But the problem was, I knew he was a henchman at that moment, just as I thought I had him guilty. I thought he was not free. He told me he had a gun in his pocket. I have a gun in my pocket. And at that very moment, he put me in the bind. He probably demanded that I take my magician's handcuffs out, which in fact were real policemen's double walking handcuffs. He got me to take, he took the key from me. And then he proceeded to have me walk myself in. But on top of that, he had the double lock. He gave me the key to make sure that I double locked myself to prevent me from kicking. I accidentally dropped the key, being the klutz I was because I was so nervous about the gun in his pocket. <laughs> My question was, was the gun in his pocket a real gun or was he just very, very happy to see me? <laughs> Clearly that Logan was not one of those one in six who was gay. <laughs> Joke. He had me double lock myself. But then he took one of the zip ties I normally use for lock picking from my back pocket. He took the key and he took a zip tie from my inner jacket pocket. Being an incompetent stooge, he had not remembered from his training how 
watch him search somewhere. So then he proceeded to put me, he proceeded to bind my thumbs in a zip tie. He proceeded to put it around my thumbs and bind me in a zip tie. Go ahead. Of course, I fought back to my magician days. He proceeded to bind me in the zip tie. I tried to think back to my magician days. How was I going to escape from this predicament? But then he proceeded to walk away and leave me as he sat by the table. So he was wanting to report back to his master who had stolen it as to how it really happened. He kept the key. The problem was, I was trying to think, how would I escape this situation? I had never practiced such an escape before. But then I remembered the old trick by Harry Houdini. I simply flexed my muscles and attempted, and I broke through the zip tie. I tried to focus, remembering how on earth I was supposed to escape handcuffs in this predicament. He had taken my only key, my only possible source of escape. But lo and behold, I figured it out. And while I was thinking, I realized, wait, it was a woman, but she must have had a henchman man who distracted the culprit while she stole into that thing. And the only place it could possibly be was her purse, for she wanted to eat it later. Which is why I realized at that point that the culprit was in our very audience. It was a judge in this very competition. It was you, Christine! Look at your purse! There is a cinnamon apple cookie in there. The proof of the culprit! by the producers of Buck, the glory shining, and of course, Harry Mancini for the Pink Panther. My case was solved. I am the practitioner, ladies and gentlemen, another case solved. Ask for my card after the show. Good night, I bid you adieu. You'll get your bra back after the show.